Hello everyone, welcome to another part in the Remaking Door series. Today what we're going to be going over is how to implement uh, the Rush's AI inside of our game. Um, it's honestly not that hard if you, it, it, when you figure out how to do it, it's not that hard. Um, but uh, it does require us to set up a lot of stuff, so let's go ahead and get right into setting up some stuff. So inside of the door, I made some changes to it. I made it so you can only open it so you can't close it you cannot uh, now only open it so you might you probably have like a bunch of script uh, uh below this else you probably have a bunch of code that says like if the bounce blah 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 uh we don't need any anymore you can just go ahead and delete everything past the else and just go ahead and put in tween open colon play and then prompt on enable equals false so what this is doing is it's playing the opening animation and then it's setting that prompt uh to not enabled anymore so now that we have that let's go ahead and insert a int value inside of the door model and we will name this room uh we'll name this room num so what this will hold is because when we are opening closing when we are opening doors we need to see what actually room number that door is in so to do this we're gonna go ahead and put a uh, value inside of this door and we'll call it room number and this will hold the number of the room so we're gonna go inside of our generation script and we're gonna go ahead and go down to here we have clone door I'm going to say cloned door dot room num dot value equals room num. So if we go ahead, let me not hit play. Let me hit uh, run instead. So if we go here and then we go ahead and run this. And we go in here. This, this is the first room. Uh, the room number value in the door should be set to one. This one should be set to two and then so on and so on all the way down to the end. So we have that set up. Next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a bindable event inside of our generation script code because this will uh, fire when a door is open. So we'll just name it door open and we will scroll down to the uh, ending of our code. And what we're going to write down here, we're going to actually put it before for I one equals uh, one comma num rooms. We're going to say script dot door open dot event called connect function fire room num and what we can do here is we can just print the room num so we'll just print the room number of the door that gets opened and inside of the door code the handler we're going to go ahead and make some changes here we're going to enter on the prompt that enabled and we're going to go ahead and say workspace dot generation dot so we're getting this code right here then we're going to say door open on fire and then we will just send over the room number value so now every time we hit what every time we open the door it should uh send over the value inside of the output so besides door number zero because this is its own thing every time we open a door it should print the room number so let's go and see so when we open this door it should print out one okay printed out one let's go ahead and test number two two three and so on and so forth so now that we have that up and working let's um make the rush ai so i already have it set up um this everything everything that i go over in today's tutorial will be linked in a big model in the description you can take it out and you can use all of it for your games i don't care put it all in your games um you don't have you don't have to credit me or anything you can just go ahead and use it in your game so this is already this I already made and it'll be linked in the description, but in case you're wondering how to set up your own, I will go ahead and redo it. So what I did here was I just grabbed one of the entrance points for the one of the door, one of the rooms. You can just go ahead and put it inside workspace. I renamed it to primary. I grouped it and I named it Rush AI. This is where you'll put your face or whatever you want on it. Um, I'm not going to do it again because I already did it for this one, but, um, let me just go ahead and set up the particles again. Like I have here, name this particles and I just go ahead and put a particle emitter in here. This one will, the particles will be unanchored and the primary part will be welded to um, the particles. So you just select the primary control all the particles and then, uh, weld and then make a new weld in between them. 
and then you're going to set the primary part of the rush ai to that uh primary part in there so that's just basically how you set up the rush ai so we can just go ahead and put this once you have that set up we can put it inside of replicated storage so now what we're going to do is actually make it generate the rush uh, model so we're going to insert a new module script inside of the generation uh, code we're going to name this uh, rush and we can just say local rush equals that and then return rush so in here we're going to go ahead and define the replicated storage because that's where it's holding our rush model and once we have that we can make a new function called rush dot new like this oops wait not like that function rush dot new like this so now what we need to do is we need to actually code it so that when this function gets called we are um generating rush so we're going to put some values in here we're going to put number and we're going to put generated rooms so we'll say local rush model equals replicate storage dot rush ai clone clone then we'll say local previous num equals number minus one local maximum num equals number plus one and then local previous room equals generated rooms square brackets previous num then we'll say if not generated rooms square brackets max maximum num then maximum num equals number of generated rooms then we'll say local maximum room equals uh generated rooms square brackets maximum num and then we'll say rush model colon pivot to previous room dot exit dot c frame and then we will say rush model dot parent equals workspace so what we're all what we're getting here is we're getting the previous number so we're getting the current room number then we're getting the generated rooms so all the generated rooms in the whole uh thing then we're getting the previous room number which we're doing number minus one we're getting the other we're getting the next room number which is maximum number um and that's just adding on a number we're getting the previous room and we're saying if not if we can't so let's say it's like room 100 right and there is no more um and there is no like other like there's no 101 room right so it'll just be we'll set that maximum number to the whole number so it'll just be 100 so now we're setting the maximum room to the generated rooms maximum number and then we're pivoting we're getting that rush model that we cloned and we're putting it inside of the previous rooms um exit c frame so now that we have that all set up we need to make some changes inside of our generation code so we'll scroll all the way down to the bottom and we will code a little bit so we'll say um let me think here first thing we're going to do is require that rush script so we'll say local rush equals script dot rush well actually it's a module so we have to say require script dot rush then we'll then we'll make a table we'll say generated rooms equals squiggly brackets and then we'll put in pre room because that start room is already in there then we will say um inside of here we're actually let me take this and put it below this one inside of this we're going to go ahead and say generated rooms so we're getting this table right here we're going to say square brackets i equals pre room then what we will say is when um when we're coding when the door is open we'll say rush dot new so we're getting that function we created and then we're going to send over the room number and we're going to send over that generated rooms table and let's make it so that it's not every room so we'll say if um room num equal equals three then actually we'll just set it to two then we will run this code so if the room number the door we're opening is number two then we will make a new rush ai let's go ahead and test this out so we'll open this one hope this was locked we need to find a key okay, there it is
and now when we open this door it should make a new rush ai so we open that door there's no rush ai here but if we turn this corner there should be a new one right there in the uh door frame just like that so we have that all set up now but what we need to do is actually make the um rush model move so to do this what we need to do is we're going to go back inside of our rush module script and we're going to make a new function called rush.move like this and there's going to be some stuff we're going to send we're going to have in here so we're going to get the actual rush ai model we're going to get the previous number we're going to get the maximum number and then we're also going to get the that uh generated rooms uh folder i mean that generated rooms table like that so now what we will say, we'll say for i equals previous num, comma max num to. Oh, and one other thing I forgot. We have to set up waypoints for it. So um, inside of the possible hallways, I have some waypoints already set up. So what you need to do is for straight hallways, like the uh, long hallway and the short hallway, you don't need any waypoints because it's just exit to, uh, it's just exit to entrance exit to entrance so you don't need any waypoints but for um more complex rooms like this where it's like a curve you need actual waypoints so that you can uh you need to get around that corner because if you don't have any waypoints it'll just go from this point to this point and it'll look really bad it'll just go right through and that doesn't really make any sense so what we're gonna do is i already have them set up as you can see um you you're gonna make a folder inside of the one that you want so we're going to make a folder called waypoints. Then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to duplicate this one, like the exit or the, it doesn't really matter which one you duplicate. And you're just going to duplicate that and drag it to like the corner part of your hallway. So, or like, let's say you have stairs, you're going to drag it from the bottom to the top. Um, I'll show you to do it with like the ladder one as well. But once you have this, you're just going to name it one. And however many waypoints you have, if you have one, and if you have two waypoints, three waypoints, four waypoints, you're just going to make them all in the order that you want it to go in. And you're just going to drag that inside of the waypoints folder. You can just go ahead and set that transparency to one and uh, you have it set up. But for more stuff, for stuff that's not just like a turn and you actually have like a, like a level change. What I have here is inside the ladder one, I have two waypoints. So the first waypoint is down here and the second waypoint is up here. So the, the rush ai is going to start here it's going to come here it's going to go to this one it's going to go up the ladder come here and then go to the exit like that pretty simple so all of these will be linked in the description again like i said it'll be in a huge model that you can just go ahead and take and put right into your game and set it up using this tutorial um so yeah so once you have all those waypoints set up you can just go ahead and take all these uh hallways and put them back inside of your uh, possible hallways folder so it's actually code it so that it can read the waypoint so we'll say local room equals generated rooms i then we will say um rush let me think here hmm. let's just get the waypoint switch so we'll say local waypoints equals room colon find first child waypoint so we're finding that waypoints folder that we have inside of them and some of them that don't have it we'll just go ahead and skip over this because it's just entrance to exit so then we'll say um if waypoints then for i equals one comma number of waypoints colon get children so we're just getting how many waypoints are in that folder We'll say not do we'll say i mean not then we'll say do um and then for now we will just leave this because we have to make another function which will be called move to which will actually move the uh rush ai so we'll say function rush dot move to we'll get the model of the rush and we will get the targets so what we're gonna say is we'll, we're gonna define some stuff we're gonna say local um We'll say local alpha equals zero. 
local speed equals this could be whatever you want i'm just gonna set it to like 60. then we'll say um local distance so we're getting the distance between the model and the target we'll say parentheses model dot primary part dot position minus target dot position and then we'll say dot magnitude so this is just getting the um distance between the two points then we'll say local relative speed equals uh distance divided by speed local start c frame equals a uh, model dot primary part dot c frame and then we can go ahead and say local loop is nil and then we will say local reached we'll say local reached equals um instance dot new findable events so it's a lot of uh and then one other thing we need to do is we need to get a uh, run service so to do this we're gonna just go ahead and say local run service equals game clone get service run service so let me just go ahead and explain everything we did so distance i explained we're getting the um distance between the two points the models the models point and the targets point getting the relative speed by doing the distance the distance divided by a speed then we're getting the model start C frame. So the starting position of it, setting the loop to nil. And then we're going to get a reached. We're going to make a reached bindable event that will fire when we reach a point. So now what is up? We have to go ahead and say loop equals run service dot heartbeat colon connect function delta. Then we will go ahead and say local goal C frame equals start c frame colon lerp target dot c frame comma alpha then we'll say model colon and pivot to goal c frame and then we'll say alpha plus equals delta divided by relative speed say if alpha is greater than or equal to one then loop colon disconnect and we will fire that reach target so that that reached um that reached event so we'll say reached colon fire and then down here below this end with a parentheses we'll just go ahead and say that we'll say reached dot events colon wait so we're waiting for that event to fire um and we won't run we won't go until to the next waypoint until that until we reach the first one that we so now that we have all that set up, we're going to go back inside of our uh, move code here and we'll say this. We'll say uh, we're going to go right below this local room and we're going to say rush um, dot move to model. So we're sending over the model and then we're going to go ahead and send over the room dot exit. So we're sending over that uh, target that we want. We're going to copy that. We're just going to put it here and then we're going to say move to model and instead of saying room dot exit i'm going to say waypoints square brackets i so each waypoint and then we can just go ahead and get out of this one put paste that move to code again here and then we'll say the room dot exit we will say room dot entrance so there's one other thing we need to do when we go inside of the new we're gonna go when we run when we make the new uh, rush AI. We're gonna just go ahead and enter it in here. We're gonna say rush dot move not move to dot move rush model comma previous number comma maximum number comma generated rooms and then we will say rush model colon destroy. So when we finish moving through all the waypoints and all the rooms, we will destroy the model. So let's go ahead and see if this works which i'm hoping it does so when we open the second door it should spawn in a new rush ai that moves through the uh, rooms so coming up on it it's going to spawn below there and then come up and go through this room and as you can see it is moving through the rooms and then it gets destroyed and we can change that speed to whatever you would like so let's say you set that speed to like 120, right? Let's go ahead and see if that makes it faster. 
and let's go ahead and see how fast it makes it. So we're going through room one, and oh, this one's locked. So we'll unlock it and we will open it and let's see it come through. And as you can see, that one was really fast because uh, we changed that speed. So let's set it to like a middle ground, we'll set it to 80. But what's the point of having a uh, rush AI if it's not gonna kill the player, right? So let's just go ahead and insert that rush AI back into here. We're gonna go ahead and set that particles part. We're gonna set it to a little bit more, a little bit bigger. Uh, we want the player if they touch it then we will kill them go ahead and set it to maybe I can set that actually can we set it to like this much because we when we eventually do add closets they'll be on the side here and um if you touch it if you're in that closet we want to make sure that you don't get killed so we could just set it to like that and we'll go ahead and insert a script inside of the rush ai and this will be named handler not the handler so we're going to say local model equals script dot parents then we'll say local particles equals model when we've got particles and then we'll say local primary equals model when we filed primary so we're just defining everything that's in the model what we're going to what we're going to see is if they touch the particles then we will kill them make sure that when you're uh that what you're coding to have the player touch you have the can touch on because if you don't then um then you're not gonna be able to touch it so we'll say particles dot touched home connect function and we'll say h so we're getting the hit the part that gets hit by the particles we'll say if h dot parent we'll find first child humanoid then so we're just checking to make sure that the parent of the thing that gets hit is um is actually uh, is actually a player that has a humanoid and if it is then we'll say h dot parents for child humanoid dot health equals zero so now when we hit it it should uh kill us let's go ahead and test this out We'll unlock number one and we need another key and let's go ahead and open this see if we die when it hits yeah. us and as you can see now when the ai hits us we uh we die so um that's pretty much how you insert a basic rush ai into your game um obviously this is very basic i'm going to make a second part to this one um to this to this episode where we go into depth more on like how to make it so that they can be inside closets and not get hit by the ai so they actually have to hide there'll be stuff that happens that lets you know that rush is coming like in the original doors game it has like the flickering of the lights we'll, in we'll make something like that um and um yeah we'll just we'll make it more we'll add some sounds maybe and we'll just make it more um less basic than it is right now but this was just a basic tour how to set it up um i hope you guys enjoyed leave any questions or concerns you have in the comments i will try to respond to all of them and help you guys out if you enjoyed please like the video and as always i will see you in the next one